Utility first CSS has been a popular trend within the front end landscape. You might have seen it mentioned alongside another tool called Tailwind CSS. So, what is utility? What problem does this utility first approach solve? And how does Tailwind fit into this? We're going to answer all of that in this video. Let's start off with some classic CSS HTML code for demonstration. It's a container class and a heading class, and the HTML that consumed them. Using the utility first approach, the CSS code will become something like this. As you can see, it's simply replacing the high level classes, such as container and heading, with the low level classes. These low level classes are called utility classes. You can think of them as low level design commodities with predictable names. That's why they are also called atomic classes. And then we put the classes directly inside HTML. And that's it. A utility class usually has a predictable name. For example, without looking at the CSS of this class, I would have guessed it's probably something like this. And that would be accurate because the name is predictable. With this kind of naming convention, you rarely have a need to modify the CSS of a utility class. If you need to change the look and feel of your app, you simply just modify the HTML to add or remove classes. You should not be modifying the CSS of the class. For example, if I no longer need the background color, I will just simply remove the BG like gray class like this. Whereas in the traditional setup, I would have to change the content of the container class like this. At first, this doesn't seem like a huge difference, but this has a huge implication in terms of maintainability. If you change by modifying the CSS, you need extra care to make sure that the change doesn't affect anything unintended. But if you change by modifying only the HTML, you know for sure that the change is only affecting the HTML that you just modified. The main benefit of using utility classes is simply this. You don't have to worry about unintended consequences of adding or removing styles. For Vue.js developers, this might not be such a big deal if you're already using style scoped. But if you have plenty of CSS shared across different components, the utility first approach comes with a unique way of sharing code, as we'll see in a future lesson. Notice that in the example here, we didn't have the user framework. So why do we need Tailwind? First, Tailwind provides all the classes you need so you don't have to create them yourself. Secondly, a framework provides more useful features such as just-in-time compilation and responsive design features. Lastly, a framework can be customized with your own configurations. This course is structured around refactoring an existing Vue.js application. Along the way, you'll learn the basics of using Tailwind, and we'll also get into advanced topics such as responsive design, conditional style, and customizing Tailwind. We'll wrap up the course with the final lessons of custom class and code reuse patterns. At the end, you'll be able to apply Tailwind in a Vue.js project. If that sounds good to you, let's move on to the next lesson where we'll be setting up Tailwind for a Vue.js application. In this lesson, we'll be setting up Tailwind for a Vue.js project. First, grab the sample app from GitHub. This app doesn't come with Tailwind pre-installed. So let's install Tailwind along with two other dependencies. They are dev dependencies. We only need them for development, not for production. Tailwind CSS is a plugin for Post CSS. So Post CSS is basically the main engine that Tailwind runs on. Auto Prefixer is another plugin for allowing you to write browser agnostic CSS. We're not going to use Auto Prefixer directly but it is a dev dependency for Tailwind. Now we just have to run npm install to install all the dependencies. Next, we need to add some config files for Tailwind and post CSS. We can run this command to generate the two files. 
we don't have to do anything for the post CSS config. But for the Tailwind config, we need to let Tailwind know what files to scan. We want it to scan only the files with the .view extension. But potentially, we might also be using Tailwind inside index.html. Lastly, we need to go to the main.css file and add this on top of the file. This will take care of importing whatever CSS Tailwind generates for us into our app. Optionally, if you want some base style to reset the default, you can do Tailwind base. Since this app already has its own base styles, we will not be using Tailwind base. But if you're starting out with a brand new app, it's a good idea to use that. You can also do Tailwind components if you want to use the Tailwind UI component library. But we're just going to be using Tailwind CSS in this course. Tailwind UI and Tailwind CSS are two related but different projects. Now that everything has been properly set up, let's move on to the components. We're going to use Tailwind to refactor two components, the app component and the product display component. Most of the CSS code are located in the product display component. If you run the app, it looks like this in the browser. Lastly, we have to confirm that Tailwind is working. So go to index.html and add a utility class to the HTML. The BG black class will be setting the background color to black. If you're seeing this, that means Tailwind is working and you can remove BG black. Now we're ready to move on to the next lesson and start the refactoring. <laughs>